everybody, my name is Travel Instincts, and today I am sharing a program that I made for you. Because if you're watching this, then you're probably interested in setting up mixed reality. And a month ago, I made a video describing this process, and I described it as something that would probably make you want to pull your hair out on the first try. And it's true, I wasn't lying back then. Uh, so I made a program to fix that for you. This is a tool that is exclusively designed to sync up your real life camera with your fake camera. So here's a video on how to do that. <laughs> Right, and here it is. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it works, and that's all that really matters, right? Uh, yeah, please ignore my bad UI design. But anyway, so this tool, there's a link in the description below, so you can go ahead and get that download started. However, it doesn't matter too very much because it's a whopping 13 megs, so it shouldn't take you too long. But anyway, so the first thing that you need to do is read this stuff. Please don't just ignore it. Some of this actually is important. Uh, these steps specifically, it is important just because Steam is often finicky with how it does its controller map. Uh, so doing this gives you the best odds for success. Worst case though, restart your entire computer, <laughs> exit Steam, and just do a reboot if your controllers aren't detected. Also crucial, if for whatever reason your webcam does not show up here, or if you're using a capture card, follow these instructions. This is kind of a weird hacky workaround, but it does work. Uh, the solution is to have XSplit open with your actual game capture card or your uh, with your webcam actually loaded up in it, because XSplit actually broadcasts itself its own view as a webcam. So you're able to pull XSplit Broadcaster and pull it in here. So I'm using an Elgato capture card. So this is the only way that I can get this tool working. So remember, if your program is not listed here, if your webcam isn't listed, download XSplit, doesn't matter if it's free or paid, and get it going. Last thing before starting, make sure that your Steam VR display box looks just like this. You should have two controllers, both of them green. You shouldn't have a third one showing up here. If you do, make sure that you turn off one of them, turn off Steam VR, and restart it. Step two out of five. Nope, if you're watching this on YouTube, you did not miss a step. Uh, you just don't need to see it because it means that your controller isn't seen. Step one is trying to make sure that your controllers are detected. So if you're seeing that step, you need to wave your controllers around and after a few seconds, if it's still not picking them up, you need to restart Steam VR because something's wrong. Step two out of five, pulling the trigger. Not too complicated. Step three out of five. This one is to line up the game camera with your camera. So you pull it really close to the lens, as close as you feel comfortable, and then pull the grip. Step four, if you're at this point and you haven't already marked your room in some way, then you didn't read the instructions at the start of the program. Shame on you. All right, so this step is to mark your real life uh, area with the game area. So I've got just these little, uh, these little stickers, these little note markers. I'm gonna put these around, it doesn't matter what you use as long as it's contrasting enough to where you can see it in the view. And, uh, and that's, that's pretty much all that matters, you just need to be able to see it. So I'm gonna put three of them going vertically as close to the center of the view as I can. Doesn't have to be spot on, but just something close. And one more, where's, where's my foot, there it is. There we go. All right, so now I got three points down the center, and then I want two on the sides of the view. Move them farther. Yeah, of course you can. There we go. This one on the blue. I tried using a blue at one point, and it just didn't light up, or I couldn't see it. Weird, huh? Anyway, so one more over here. Let's do that. Perfect. There we go. So now I got my markers. Next up, using the butt of the controller, the actual charging port, and squeezing the grip pads at each of their locations. Now that I've marked each of those locations, it's got a pretty decent idea of where the controller is, but it's still not right. So now I'm actually going to point my controller at my monitor and then hold down the trigger to try to get my in-game dots lined up with the markers. Oh, sorry, I forgot to press the trigger. You press the trigger to tell it whenever you're done uh, marking the points. All right, so now you'll notice that the very center mark, this thing right here, uh, is pretty much dead on. However, both the sides, way over 
over here, and over here uh, is just a little bit farther in, uh, which means I need to change the field of view. So to do that, I'm going to hold the application button at the very top and then slide it backwards or forwards, depending on which way you need to go. I always get it wrong on the first try. All right, so that's a little bit better. Now the rotation, again, holding down the trigger. Almost. All right, that's good enough for this one. I'm not trying to get it absolutely spot on yet because there's another step and I'm, there's gonna be a cycle of things that I need to do in order to get this thing synced. Now that those spots are actually pretty dang close, now I'm going to hold the controller up towards the camera to where it's pretty much taking up the entire view, which I'm gonna hide this by the way. There we go. I'm gonna put it up close and then I'm gonna squeeze the grips. And my gosh, that's already really close. I'm gonna squeeze the grips and I'm gonna move the controller around until these things line up as close as I can possibly do it. Get closer again. All right, that's pretty good right there. Now I'm gonna back up again and I'm going to uh, change the alignment. Actually, gosh, that is already really close. With the trigger, now I'm using the trigger by the way. Best tip I can give you is whenever you're up close, use the grips. Whenever you're back farther away, use the uh, use the trigger to get the uh, the rotation correct. So I'm gonna look at the points again, and it looks like I am up. What am I over here? All right, so my field of view still needs a little bit of work. So now, there's that. So I'm just eyeballing each of the four spots, uh, five spots, sorry. That's pretty good. Now that we've changed the field of view, this is gonna be off. Not by much. That's pretty good. Let's check the far side. Bad. Let's check back over here. The controller is a bit in on that side, meaning on the inside of the screen. Okay, so and it's a bit on the right on that one. So now I'm going to change the rotation just so slightly. Guys, what do you think? All right, that's pretty much it. This controller is lined up better than I probably ever could have done it by just tweaking the things by hand because I would have given up a long time ago. Uh, so that's a tool, let me know what you think. Uh, now I'm gonna go into some of the kind of gotchas and the things that I found that are really useful to know whenever syncing these things up. Field of view. Field of view is incredibly important to get right first before you start tweaking too much of the other things. So the first thing you need to do is, like I did at the very beginning, line up the very center dot, right? Because that's gonna be the least thing affected by your field of view, whatever it may be. So try to get a dot in the very center and line up that dot perfectly before you start playing with any of your other settings. Once you have your middle point marked, the best thing to do after that is get your left and right markers synced up at least pretty close. Uh, so again, hold the application button, the button above the touchpad, and pull in your markers until things are lined up. You'll notice that if your markers are wrong and you hold your controller from on one side to the other, on this one, the fake controller is on the farther outside compared to the real controller. And on this side, and again, it's farther out. So if you ever have a setup where on both sides, it's farther out from the actual controller or farther in than the actual controller, then you need to adjust your field of view. On the other hand, if you hold your controller on one side, and in this case, the fake controller is farther to the left from your perspective, and on this side, it's also farther to the left. That is not a field of view issue anymore. That is simply a rotation issue. So I'm going to change it by holding down the trigger. 
moving it until it lines up. Same thing, your dots would have shown that, uh, but whenever you're looking around there, you may be more focused on the controllers than the actual dots, which is actually appropriate. Uh, but still, that's a good indication. If it's on the left hand or the right hand, if it's just consistently on one side or the other, then you're talking about rotation. If they are inverse on both sides, then you're talking about field of view. Now, rotation. This is another easy, easy one to spot. If on one far side, you have the controller down or above, and on the other side, it is the opposite. So on the other side, it was down below. The right one was down below. On this side, it's a higher up. You got a rotation issue. So easy enough to solve. Voila. Just hold down the trigger and rotate the controller. Special things to note. I've already said it, but just make sure that your configuration, whenever you're up close like this, that it matches up very well. Pay special attention to, to the bottom here. I found out several cases where the controller's bigger than the actual five, which is why I'm having it cycle through there to make it easier for you to see. Uh, but make sure that this is spot on before you go through and try getting things just perfect. It is also very important to remember that this is not just a one time per stage thing. You're going to need to hold it up here and then come back here and change the angle a little bit and then come back to the front and change the using the grips to move it around. Okay, cycle through it several times because each time you're getting a little bit closer and closer to actually getting it perfect. So don't give up until you are happy with the results and just remember to keep going back and forth making small, small adjustments. All right guys, that's it. I hope you guys appreciated this. If you do, please let me know how you ended up using this. I would love to see somebody else using this tool uh, as a way of getting themselves into mixed reality. So if you make something with it, let me know. I would love to see it. And that's it guys. If you like these videos, please hit the like button below. And if you didn't, hit the downvote button and tell me what I can do to make them better. And if you wanna see more, hit subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>